Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is the next part of my Hulkbuster suit. Last time I completed the thighs of the suit, or at least the frame of the suit. I've got my feet fixed in with snowboard bindings in snowboard boots. And there was some video of me testing it in a car park just down the road. So a few people have asked me about, um, you know, what's it going to look like. Obviously, just to stress, this is just the frame for the suit. Check out part one, where I explain that obviously the actual suit is going to be skinned up. It's going to look a bit like an Iron Man Hulkbuster, but it's actually going to be mostly of my own design. Um, and the reason I'm building this suit is so that I can fit lots of features in, because the suit's so big there's lots of space to build in special effects. So the aim is that all the panels will open up mechanically and close again. All the joints lock, so the panels can open up, you can climb in, then you can unlock the joints and walk around, and then you can lock them again, open up all the panels, climb out and leave the whole suit standing there by itself. And that's the reason it's so boxy and that I've built this out of quite a strong material. So the rest of it isn't going to be made of plywood. The skins are going to be made of much lighter material, probably various foams and sheet materials. So today we're going to work our way up and look at the torso mechanism. Um, I need to use some power tools like a jigsaw and things for that. And I don't have space in here to do it. So. So I'm down at So Make It, Southampton Makerspace. This is our Dalek in progress. There's a video on my channel about that. That's the base there made of the uh, wheelchair assembly. So there's all sorts of tools here, some of which are mine, which are on loan. So we're going to do cutting some complex angles like curves that I really need to use a jigsaw for. So um, that's why we're here. Right, so this is what I've eventually made, which uh, goes on there quite nicely. As I said, all the joints are going to lock. I haven't done the actual top of the thigh joint yet, so I'm just going to clip these on with a couple of clips so they don't fall off while I'm talking about it. So, let's have a closer look. So obviously we've got some shoulder scoops there. We need to put some pads in. There's going to be a flat piece of sheet material and then foam on the inside for each shoulder. The big stick you see at the top there um, is about just over six feet high from the ground um, and that is going to be where the arms are supported so there'll be a thing that sticks out and then the shoulder bell of the actual suit is going to be much higher so it can pivot around on a gimbal basically. Down here we've got some space to put in some more padding for the sort of hips. This thing's actually sat on there, it's too low. There's going to be a gap between the two and that's so I can tilt side to side and twist and so on. And I just need to come up with some flexible linkage effectively between the legs and the top of this. And I believe that's going to be some rubber buffers which are sort of squashy, probably 3D printed in Ninja Flex. And also some rubber bungee cords so that the thighs are constrained um, at the hip joint, but they can flex all around and I can rotate the torso and tip from side to side. Right, I've just screwed in a couple of bits of plastic there, which actually foam PVC board, it's fairly flexible. Um, hopefully it'll be strong enough to hold everything. And then I'm going to be gluing in these two big foam shoulder pads with some contact adhesive. Right, so I've glued my 
foam pads in the shoulders there, which seem to be perfectly good. So let's try and climb up into this. This is why we need a stable base. I get my shoulders in, and then we would unhook the latches, which won't be these, there'll be some other mechanism. And then obviously I can twist and turn around. You can imagine my arms being in the top half of the really big arms. The bottom half are gonna be um, basically animatronic with joysticks that I operate with my hands. So I can twist and turn all the way around. Obviously I'll have a remote mechanism to unlock the knees and also do my snowboard bindings up. At the moment my feet aren't fixed in properly and I can no longer bend down to do that. So that's one of the next things I need to work on. And um, the top of the thighs will be coupled to this piece with um, quite a tight bungee cord that holds the thighs up but still allows me to twist and turn all the way round. So then I can basically put this back down again, it will pop back into some sort of rubber bushings because the bungee cord will pull it in and then with any luck I should be able to climb out. So here's a quick view from the back. The aim is that um, there's plenty of space in there. Those are the shoulders that you can see. And there's space for a little control panel in here probably so that I can actually pull my arms back inside and put them in front of me and activate buttons and other functions of the suit. And all the way down here, so we've currently got these bolts that go through, which I did last time. That's gonna be a proper mechanism with a proper lever that's gonna be cable controlled from um, up in the torso so I don't struggle to reach them. And also the snowboard bindings have just got this fairly simple mechanism at the back that pulls up and that locks your foot in and then it pulls back down again and releases. So that's um, not gonna to be too tricky to operate with a cable control so that I can reach them. So what I was just 3D printing there were these things, which are basically a piece of Ninja Flex on top of some ABS and an ABS piece. And one has a chamfer and one has a kind of cone shape so they fit together. So these are gonna go in between the two layers, each side. So one there and one on the other side. And you'll notice there's a hole right through the middle of them uh, which is going to take a piece of bungee cord, as I mentioned. So that's going to go through and be anchored at the top and bottom so that the top can stretch away and flex all around and then obviously the bungee will be under tension which will pull the two halves back together and locate them. So um, those will be at the front of the piece here and we'll have a latching, an actual latch at the back with a block so that that holds the thing in place when I'm not in there and it can't just keel over forwards. So, um, basically I need to paint this up as well. So I've got a load of tins of silver paint which were from Poundland in the UK, which is um, it's only one pound a tin for 210 mil. It's an auto paint, but it's basically um, silver generic silver, it's not colour matched but it's incredibly cheap. So I'm going to be spraying up all of the plywood in that. Uh, plywood painted silver looks quite good, it looks like a bit of a brush between galvan um, a cross between galvanised steel and brushed aluminium. So um, obviously that's going to have better visual impact. As I mentioned at the beginning there will be skins and things over this so I'm envisaging another layer of fake mechanics like pistons and that sort of thing and wiring and conduit then two layers of skin which are going to be probably carved polystyrene followed by some thin sheet material to make the final outer skins. On top of that some of the sections are going to open up to allow you to get in and out and some of the sections on the front will also open up just for show. So at that point you'll, you may be able to see some of the frame which is quite important that it's a nice colour and doesn't look like a piece of plywood. So I need to be very careful where I position the torso onto the legs so that these joints work properly and I get the correct movement and I also need to install some more padding around the thighs and knees. So I've already installed one piece or two pieces in the back of the torso there around the hips. But I need to do that to the rest of the suit, get the tensions and positions correct and then we should be able to walk around in it. So that's all I've got for this time. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and like my Facebook page and subscribe to my channel for more updates. Mm -hmm.